was your emergency? <laughs> I'm not sure. Is it like threatening? Yes. Are you safe right now? No! When I picked TRAP this year, I think that I got students interested in it pretty quickly based on the fact that it was called a documentary horror style like genre. The show opens with um, an ensemble member explaining that the show is shot documentary style um, based on original sources like interviews, letters, security camera footage, things like that. We find out that not only are we watching a play about something that happened previously, but we are currently part of the play. So the audience, the actors, um, everybody's experiencing watching the play while being a part of the play. It was definitely a lot different. I know especially for um, me, I had a few monologues. It's really hard because I'm definitely somebody that feeds off of energy. Um, and so it really tested my acting skills and acting isn't really something I practice very much so I found myself needing to actually think about it. My character, I start off coming from the audience um, with a phone call. I'm on the phone with a 911 dispatcher and I'm completely terrified. Who's that again? Where are you in the theater? I'm just standing on the stage! Take a very, very deep breath. Hold it. I think that we we both kind of want to have the same common goal, like we both yeah. have the same common goal, we're trying to figure it out, but I mean we butt heads a little bit just because Angela is more on the scared side and yeah. I'm, I understand that it's a time sensitive case and so I'm like, dude, just like <laughs> get over your trauma and just help me out. Yeah, I definitely say we butt, butt heads a little bit at like the beginning of our relationship. Um, Angela's the stubborn teenager who doesn't want to, like, she just wants to save herself kind of at the beginning, but yeah. after Heish kind of gets through to her, she, like, wants to help the people that she loves. I play Marion Jay, who is a, or was a professor at the University of Washington until he somehow died, uh, which is later then revealed in the play to be the act of the antagonist, the Pharanox. He's very nervous all the time. He's always looking over his shoulder uh, because the things that he's studying are the things that also frighten him the most. These Pharanox, they are so good at not being seen, pretending to be human, that he can never really tell if he's being watched. In my opinion, I do not think stage crew is acknowledged or appreciated as they should be. I think there was some struggle, like, just having enough support, and it's hard for me to be in the sound booth, in the audience, and backstage, so, um, and especially with this show, not having them come out and take bows at the end because of, like, the fake ending, um, I do worry that they didn't feel as acknowledged or appreciated. You want a stage manager just to be a leader, make sure people are doing what they're supposed to. I'm just not much of a performer. I did show choir my freshman year, absolutely hated it. I was like, no, backstage stuff is better. Um, I don't know, I'm a bossy person. I like being able to boss people around. You don't want to stress out the uh, cast members too much, having them have to deal with all that stuff, because if they had to do their lines plus move all the props, like the desks and stuff, oh god, it would be all over the place. Usually this is on stage, but this is where it goes when we're not using it. Here are some chairs some of the cast members bring out. Here is where we're hiding an easel that goes out for a very short period of time. Here is a lovely podium that is handmade with a tablecloth. This is our what is, um, props table for the left side. Well, I think everyone uses it actually. And then if we walk all the way down here, usually this is where people just chill out when they have nothing to do. Uh, so you'll often find Ash, Zeke, and Logan, and Blake here, if you're ever looking for them. Here is another prop table. It is it needs to be organized, apparently. And then the other side. If you look right here, these are our stage directions, if you're interested. 
my role is that I'm the audio uh, tech person, so I make sure all the sounds are running smoothly and there's no hiccups in the audio. Gives it more of a mysterious vibe, especially for uh, this year's play. If we didn't have really good lighting and really good sound, we, it would feel a little bit more foamy. Like if a cast member is supposed to have a prop and they don't get that prop, then it can, they have to on the spot improv and it can mess up their performance. Like the other day, um, one of the crew members was supposed to put, or take away some decorations on the desk um, and they didn't and so the person that was supposed to go out there and sit on the desk couldn't and there was just random stuff on the desk during the scene and sometimes the stuff that if you forget to do something it won't make sense in the scene. Everybody's like getting ready for the most pretentious show. Just like pretend you're getting punched, okay? Ready? Okay. Yeah, beat her up! Beat her up! <laughs> My role within the play is I am the student director, which the responsibilities that go along with that would be, of course I warm up the cast every rehearsal and before every show, but also I'm there along with the director, uh, Champ, to kind of aid in the different ideas that she has and directions she wants to go with the play. Some of the iconic theater warm-ups and the more popular ones definitely would be something we do well, one of my favorites as well is something we do is called Freeze Improv, where we set up a group, usually it's three or four, it depends on how many people we have total, uh, who act out a scene, any scene, it's an improv, they come up with it at the top of their head, and the rest of the group watches, someone watching says freeze, uh, and then they kind of switch out, it's really fun. Um, another one that we enjoy is where we all uh, it's a listening game, so we all close close our eyes and we have to try to count from one to whatever the amount of group we have or however high we decide. Uh, but no one can say the same number twice, which is harder than it sounds. Uh, but those are those are my two favorite, and I feel like are also replicating the group's it wasn't favorite. That hard. Hillary walked up to Champ while she was bawling, and I was like, Ash, and Champ was like, Ash. <laughs> <laughs> The student director this year was Logan Fry. Um, he had a pretty large role in last year's play Puffs, and just based on how I saw him interact with other students and the work that he put into that play, I thought he would be a great fit for um, this year's student director. And next year's student director will be Ash Wasik. There's many reasons why we chose Ash. Uh, mainly towards the earlier part of my role when I wasn't sure I knew my responsibilities and uh, there were a couple of responsibilities that I let pass me by that I wasn't expecting. Uh, Ash had the experience of their older brother, uh, Noah Wasik, being a student director, so they kind of knew and understood the responsibilities beforehand. So Ash is a junior and has been doing the fall play all three years of their um, school year and just a very dedicated and focused person. and like theater is something that I think brings them a lot of joy, so I think they're a great fit for that. The new Marion High School student director of the theater program. Yay! I think personally that the play was a huge success, not bias at all. So the play, this play, Trap, was our biggest turnout for audience members um, the three years I have been doing it. And I think that's great that it's just growing every year. Um, student body, same um, same thing is that I had, this was the most people that tried out for the play also. But, um, you know, I know for example that like the spring musical, that those sell out for every single night. 
and I think it's because there's a huge cast, but also the music department is larger and more supportive. We weren't sure how our audience was going to take take it, but I think our audience took it very well, uh, especially towards the end where it got scary uh, or spooky. Uh, there were screams in the audience. There was nervous laughter. Uh, when everyone was walking down the hallway congratulating us, people were genuinely frightened. And I feel that that says a lot about how well that we were able to perform this play. It's just been like a really fun time, like learning everyone who is a part of it. And I'm so glad that I picked it up last year um, because I have found a love for it. Probably. Unless life takes me on a weird turn, it was probably my last time on stage. And I think that I have refused to think about it. I've been kind of <laughs> in denial. Many skills that are both applicable in life, but also applicable on like a job interview. Uh, the main one, of course, being uh, like communication, public speaking, being able to perform in front of a large amount of people. Anybody that's watching this, um, if you are an athlete, just try it because you can get really stuck and some people think, oh, it's not cool, it's not fun, but there are so many cases where it like it weirdly translates, like it, it weirdly does, the communication aspect, like on a court versus in here, and you play in front of an audience, so you can, you can speak in front of an audience, I know that you can. Um, so I would just say don't knock it till you try it and being a theater kid is honestly, it's so cool. It is, <laughs> being it's a theater fun. kid is where it's at.